So renewables are becoming the most economically feasible fashion of producing power in comparison to fossil fuels and using Stantec Beacon. We can adjust the undulation within the rack and accommodate a far more uh, versatile terrain within the racking system itself. Welcome to the STEMtech.io podcast, where we speak to our scientists, designers, engineers, and architects who are combining subject matter expertise with cutting edge technology to develop digital solutions that can help solve the problems of today and tomorrow. My name is Dave Roberts. And I'm Mike Arsenault. Today's episode is all about renewable energy, specifically solar power. Now, renewable energy continues to grab a bigger share of global energy consumption, and that number must continue to rise. Solar facilities producing solar power are a major factor in that push for more renewable energy consumption. Joining the conversation today is civil designer Kyle Jones. Kyle is based out of our Halifax office in Nova Scotia and is the creator of Stantec Beacon, a solar facility vertical design tool. Welcome to the podcast, Kyle. Thank you for having me. Great. So let's start off. There's a bit of been an inflection point for energy consumption with a pivot from fossil fuels to renewable energy. How is Stantec helping to support our clients with this transition? Stantec seems to be supporting it for all facets. So that would be from initial design, conceptual locations, environmental impacts, and so on, to final completion, construction, and implementation. Uh, there are many aspects, whether that is to incorporate renewables, but as well in the constructability and the association of the renewables within the overall energy consumption. Now, Kyle, with your civil design background, there's a lot of avenues that you could have taken with your career. Why have you decided to focus on renewable energy as your career focus? I see it as a way of the future and essentially trying to make that better transition or a more feasible transition overall. Uh, solar being a renewable, it is very easy to implement. And then from there, it's almost maintenance free. So I do find a lot of joy in setting that up and having it operational versus consuming fossil fuels. And what are the typical challenges that our clients are facing when they're developing these solar farms, Kyle? Many of the challenges that are starting to arise as more and more solar is developed are the sites that we're confined to. So in an ideal situation from a solar perspective, a solar facility would be completely flat. And in most cases, that's just simply not the case. So we're seeing that there are more and more constraints, whether that is from an environmental side of things or whether that is from a terrain. So the terrain, as it rolls with the hills or there's more undulation within the terrain, it provides more of a challenge for the racking system to be placed. In terms of the focus on solar power with renewable energy, why do you think solar power is such an effective measure for companies, organizations to pursue, both from a financial standpoint, but also from the environmental benefits of solar power itself. Exactly. It's a double facet uh, scenario, which is providing major benefits. So from a financial perspective, solar is now least expensive or one of the least expensive forms of generating power. Currently, it's a tie or a close comparison between wind and solar. So renewables are becoming the most economically feasible fashion of producing power in comparison to fossil fuels and prior methods. Moving forward from an environmental aspect, solar and as well wind, once established, they're very low on maintenance. And as well, there's no product being fed into them to be consumed to produce the energy other than the natural environment of wind and solar radiance in itself. Is there some environmental impacts though when creating solar farms? And is that something that we can help to reduce that impact? Yes, absolutely. So as I was mentioning with the undulation within grade, that proves problematic for installing solar racking. And then as well for uh, obtaining a feasible layout uh, with limited sheeting and direction toward the sun itself. So in order to make some of these sites feasible, we need to provide an, a large amount of grading, which is essentially leveling out the terrain. Now, what we can provide uh, through Stantec and using Stantec Beacon is that we can adjust the undulation within the rack 
and accommodate a far more uh, versatile terrain within the racking system itself. So we're looking at the vertical placement of the racks and we're doing that analysis across every point along the entire rack and every rack within the entire system. So we're getting into very large systems and we're able to do that very quickly and to a refined optimized layout. Kyle, Stantec Beacon seems to be right at the uh, the cross-section of technology and innovation. And, and I know you are the creator of Stantec Beacon, but it was a uh, a team effort to not only have the knowledge of solar facility design, uh, that vertical design tool that Stantec Beacon is, but also the programming knowledge necessary to create Stantec Beacon into the form it is now. So what was that process like within Stantec, having that, uh, that camaraderie between different groups to get to the finished product? In the early stages of the prototype of Beacon, the initial intent was to simply generate an overall design faster. And once I had the data automized, I realized that we could improve our design along the way. From the initial success, I submitted it to the idea machine, where Stephen Costa and many other individuals got involved, as I could see this being a benefit to every solar site downstream. By getting programming experts involved, they opened the doors as to what is possible, where I could take an idea of what I would like to see, and they were able to make that a reality. It was a very powerful combination of purpose and methods that computational design has to offer. Uh, we took the initial setup that I had and created an algorithm within Python. And that algorithm is quite complex in itself, but it also added many other capabilities to the design process that are able to be analyzed or utilized to provide a better product at the end of the day. We were able to take the months of time that it would take to complete it using an industry standard method. And I took that down to approximately a couple of days. But now by utilizing the algorithm, we're able to take that down to two to 10 minutes, essentially. So it, it's been a great experience collaborating with our in-house experts. And the product that we have available today can provide a benefit to every ground mount solar system. I'm happy to see Beacon's use expand as I'm currently collaborating with colleagues in North America, Europe, and Australia. You first implemented Stantec Beacon on the Travers Project, which is the largest solar facility in Canada. Can you take us through the typical industry standard method of designing solar facilities and the challenges that method would create with a site like Travers? It's over 3,300 acres in size and how you were able to devise Beacon to alleviate some of those challenges. So when we were first faced with Travers, uh, it was comprised of rolling hills. And within that terrain, we were using single access trackers. So these trackers are essentially 300 feet long and they need to be straight line runs. So you're looking at it from an industry standard perspective, those straight lines, the easiest fashion to do it in a vertical sense is to just follow the existing ground at either end and cut a straight line in between. So wherever that hill rolled up or down, it would simply become either cut or fill. So by doing this, we were looking at approximately 1.2 to 1.3 million cubic meters of earthworks or earth material that had to be moved. And in doing that, based off of an industry standard, it was going to create a, a large amount of disturbance across the site. So what we did is we looked at how to automate the process where we can take the ends of these racks and manipulate them in a way that is suitable to the existing ground across the entire tracker. And by doing so and manipulating it, it opened up a large amount of calculations that would have to happen to ensure that each rack was placed in the accordance with its adjacent neighbors so that it's not creating shading issues or essentially making it non-constructible. So taking that all into account, uh, we were able to create a system that can automate that validate and check every instance of vertical variation from one to the next, and as well provide a calculated best outcome for the vertical placement of every rack on that site. So we ran that across 17,000 trackers. And since then, we've refined the tool to uh, accommodate other variances and nuances to the design process. And if Travers hadn't used Stantec Beacon, how long do you think it would have taken to complete? Right. If we're looking at it, just simply laying it out off of the existing grid, and then from there, back checking those vertical variances, 
my estimation is approximately a year in design time. So that site was comprised of over 225,000 piles. And if you spend simply 30 seconds on each pile to check all those vertical variances, you'd be looking at over a year. Yeah, that's absolutely incredible. Just the, the time savings, the cost savings that you were able to create with Stantec Beacon. So you mentioned the cost savings. We also went through uh, limiting the shading, so creating more efficiency uh, from the energy produced from all the racks and the solar panels. But you also mentioned limiting the the earthworks and the disturbance to the land because a typical solar facility, it's not going to stay in perpetuity, right? There is, once the contract ends, there is the goal to return that area to a more natural state, correct? Exactly. So the land itself is not purchased, it's simply leased, and it's leased from the farmers. So at the end of the day, when all of the solar racking is removed from the site, and the site is decommissioned from a solar perspective, it's turned back over to the farmers and use, utilized as farmland. So from their perspective, they want the land itself to remain as is as much as possible. And by doing so with the use of Beacon, what we're able to do is uh, if you imagine the maximum depth of cut or the maximum amount of fill, essentially we're able to cut that in half. So in an area where before we would have to infill approximately 10 feet of material vertically, we're looking at five feet instead. And instead of covering an area of, let's say, 10 acres or so where we have land disturbance, we're able to eliminate that down or limit it down to approximately uh, five acres or so. So what we're doing is we're manipulating the rack vertically to suit the existing ground conditions, but it's providing many benefits from the earthworks cost to the amount of steel used to land disturbance and so on. And are you able to articulate what that actually means in the financial benefits that you've, you've touched on there, Kyle? Can you, you can expand on that anymore? Yes, so for Travers, as an example, the 1.2, 1.3 million cubic meters of earthworks and how we were able to reduce that, we reduced it by 50%. So we were down in around the 500 to 600,000 cubic meters. And in a dollar's perspective, uh, that would work out to approximately $10 million in construction. Now, not only in finances, but as well in timeline, the construction timeline would have been reduced by approximately two or three months. In doing so, we were also able to open that up to multiple contractors uh, versus the two or three that were initially qualified, just due to the amount of earthworks that were required. So we opened up the subcontractor pool that were able to bid on the project to approximately 10 or 15 rather than two or three. So obviously that would provide more competition and potentially more cost savings from that fashion. Well, it's clear that the benefits of Stantec Beacon on the Travers project were enormous and immense and really enabled that project to be as successful as it has been. As you look toward the future and you continue to refine Stantec Beacon, is there anything you're looking at uh, adding in terms of features or updates as we move forward through 2023 and beyond? Yes, thank you for bringing that up. So terrain following is an aspect that uh, many of the racking suppliers have added within the last year or two. Now, to give you an understanding of what that is, at each pile, prior methods ran a straight line between them and we weren't able to deflect. But now with terrain following, they're able to deflect the rack at each pile, and meaning that we can essentially curve our straight line over hills and through valleys. Now, by using, utilizing that racking system, uh, that requires a different design element in order to accommodate that deflection. So that's something that we currently have in the works to have Beacon work with terrain following rack. And that terrain following, I would expect to be ready within the next month or two. Uh, beyond that, fixed rack systems have their own versatility and we're implementing that as well. So we're trying to accommodate absolutely everything. And in the meantime, since Traverse, we've gone through multiple sites that have different variations, whether that is staggered racks rather than being in a straight row or multiple different elements that we're continuously adding and improving on the system to accommodate absolutely everything. Fantastic. 
Well, it's been a real pleasure for Mike and I to talk to you today, Kyle, and we've learned a lot more about renewable energy and the importance of our transition to solar power. It's fantastic to see how Stantec Beacon is a part of the solution to this critical issue that's creating a sustainable world for us. So thank you once again for being part of the Stantec.io podcast. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for listening to the Stantec.io podcast. If you've enjoyed listening, please tune in to future episodes where we'll continue to explore how digital solutions are shaping our world. In the meantime, you can also visit our website at www.stantech.io for further information.